Hi again everyone, it's Mr. Rock, and as most of you know, being a homeschool teacher is a little bit different than being, say, a traditional teacher on the fact that you're more one-on-one -on -one with your child. Um, I was talking to, to one of the adults that I know um, last night, and she expressed that uh, she was trying to do more phonics-based um, activities and cartoons and things like that. Uh, to help her kid who's now at home every day. Uh, that's one of the things that being a homeschool teacher, uh, it's really important that you understand how to connect those phonemes and those phonemic, phonemic awarenesses together. Uh, like the other people who do what I do and many traditional teachers in a, in a classroom setting, we all have training on how do we teach that to a child, what it is, um, and how to adapt to it a little bit. So I have my friend here, Alphabet Andy and Alphabet Andrea. Uh, if you see, he's got his backpack on, he's ready to learn, so hopefully you guys are too. Uh, <clears throat> so what a phonemic awareness is, is when you look at the different sounds inside of a word and you're able to break it down. Um, it could be like a compound word. So if you have a kid that's at home now who is in a classroom setting, you'll probably see him do stuff like this, put the two words together like door, doorbell, um, <clears throat> or they do the chops and the swipe. Every teacher teaches a little bit different, but the concept's all the same. Um, so I thought it was a really good idea to talk to you about what it is that they're learning at school so you can keep that learning up now so they don't fall behind later. Uh, you can talk to your kids about um, different objects in the room, have them break it down into syllables. Uh, you can do uh, something as simple as f and it, f it, fit, um, <clears throat> really anything that you want to do. Uh, just keep in mind that the more engaged you are in their interests, the more they're going to want to do it. Uh, most kids in the pre-K, K age group, five, maybe seven minutes is the max that you're going to get them to do anything, uh, and then they're going to lose interest. So you have to be prepared to constantly be shifting your activities and your learning schedule and things like that to make sure that they really, really, really want to be part of it. Uh, and that's one of the things that uh, is probably going to be the biggest struggle for anyone that's doing this at home now. So I have a really good book. It's from Dr. Seuss. It's called A Walk It In My Pocket. I'm going to read through it, and while I'm doing that, I want you to think of how rhyming is the same as doing the, the word breakdowns, because you're listening to those tones and those um, sounds, and how do you put that word together? Uh, if your kids are in the room, invite them over so that they can participate in a book too, and I'm going to have an activity to follow afterwards. So let me get started. Walk in My Pocket by Dr. Seuss. This is the front cover, the back cover, and the spine. The person who writes the book is called the author, and the person who draws the pictures is called the illustrator. I do believe in this case he did both, so let's get started. Did you ever have the feeling there was a wasket in your basket? Keep in mind these words are silly and they're meant to be. Or a Nero in your bureau. Or a wasset in your closet. Sometimes I feel quite certain there's a jerton in my curtain. Sometimes I've had feeling there's a zlock behind my clock. And that zelf on that shelf, I have talked to him a lot. That's the kind of house I live in. There's a nink in the sink and a zamp on the lamp. And they're rather nice, I think. It's good to have nice people around. Some of them are very friendly like the yacht in the pot. But that yachtle in the bottle 
Sometimes some are friendly, some are not. I think the zable on the table and the chair <clears throat> under the gear under the chair but that bofa on the sofa why well, I wish I wasn't well, I wish he wasn't there all those nuppards in the cupboard they're good fun to have about but that nooth brush on my toothbrush him I could do without The only one I'm really scared of is the zug, the vug under the rug. And that quimly, quimney up the chimney. I don't like him, not at all. And it makes me sort of nervous when the zal scoots down the, the hall. But the yeps on the steps they're great fun to have around and so are many many other friends that I have found like the teller and the neller and that geller and that deller and that beller the weller and the zeller and the seller And the grilling on the ceiling, and the zower in my shower, and the zillow on my pillow. I don't care if you believe it. That's the kind of house I live in, and I hope we never leave it. Um, so you probably noticed I stumbled on some of the words because they're just really super bizarre. Uh, and that's one of the fun things about it, and that's why children tend to like it a little bit more, is it gives... Sometimes they come off with off the wall crazy words and you just look at them like, huh? This is where they're beginning to learn those different words and those sounds and how, how they relate to something else. So when you're talking to your kid and they're pointing out stuff, you want to make sure that you don't ever tell them that they're wrong when it comes to doing uh, sounds out like that. But you want to remind them there's a difference between what's real and what's not real so that they do understand that. Some of the things that they might say don't really exist, but you're still teaching them and they're learning from you at the same time. So I said something about doing uh, a little craft and in the spirit of the walk it in the pocket, get on my crayons here. It's something that you can do real simple. Um, if you've watched my last video, you know that I like to do a little bit of art when it comes to it. So you just wanna get a regular piece of plain white paper nothing special about it get your crayons I'm going to start with a black crayon draw a pocket it could be any shape of pocket you want something kind of like that all right and then you're going to want to have your kids draw something in the pocket it could be anything that they want to do so uh, for me today I think I'm going to draw an elephant sitting in the in the uh, pocket here and you know only because it's simple, it's relatively um, enjoyable, it's, a, it's an animal that we find that uh, would relate to remembering things and possibly even being wise depending on who you talk to. Uh, so I'm going to just finish my elephant here. Again, it doesn't have to be anything crazy. He's sitting in there, his trunk's hanging out. Um, and then talk about the picture. Ask your child what they drew and why they drew it. Um, and then ask them if there's anything in here in the room that can sound like that. So whatever crazy off the wall name they made it, it you want to find objects that sound like that. And you want to keep talking about those as you go through. And you can do this as many times as you want. You can draw a person with it if you'd like. Uh, again, it's more about continuing over that story time and remember sometimes the things that they're going to say they find really silly and funny and you want to kind of laugh with it too because if they're not related to you you're not really going to get very far so i hope you enjoyed this video leave any comments or pictures at the bottom i'd like to hear what you have to say 
again, I am always open to suggestions on what to do for video or even a book read. Uh, and I'm here for you anytime that you need. Have a good day.